Welcome to the special edition of the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Hall, and I'm here with my co-host, Joel Saxum. And we brought along a friend, Lars Benson of AC883. We're still in San Diego, so we're a long way from Canada where AC883 is based. But Lars is always full of information about what's happening in the wind industry and, and what's happening on the repair side and the technology side, because he's, he's been involved in wind since the dawn of, of wind, pretty much. Uh, so, Lars, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So there's there's a whole bunch of things going on right now. Uh, you know, we're at ACP OMS, and wow. we've been together all week. You had a ton of traffic to your booth. Yeah. A lot of customers trying to sign up for repairs this season and learn about all the new technology that's going on. You want to just talk to what you're seeing? Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Uh, thank you for having me on. Uh, we uh, we seem to be getting busy. Uh, yeah. There's a ton of interest for our Blade program, which um, uh, differs clearly from the rest of our good colleagues, the way we're approaching it. Yeah. Um, we are building a new website because we have so many offerings now that we need to more we need to be more clear in our communication. Confirmed uh, new website. We just confirmed it. Confirmed, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and AC eighty three that name will remain, but it could be to say the AC eighty three uh, uh, wind repair, wind whatever something. We're gonna rebrand that a little bit because it can be a bit confusing. Okay. Because we have so many offering in as an ISP part, but also as a new technology provider, right. which is the DNA of the company. That's how we started. Right, right, right. So, so let's talk blade repair real quick. You guys, it's it's mid no mid February right now. Right. Yeah. Usually, when we start to see tenders come out from the big operators or even smaller operators, they come out in November and December if they're on the ball. Yeah. Right. If they're on the ball, <laughs> because you want to get your blade repair basically capacity ready for that next season. Because yeah. there's, I mean, we all know there's a limited amount of it uh, capacity in the. Yeah. And in Canada, your season's really short, so you're like end of May to mid October, yes. maybe. It's mid mid May to worst case scenario end of October. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, people want to have us out of the door end of September if they can. Yeah. So if you if the so the, what it looks like right now, are you see? Did you see a lot of tenders come through in the Canadian market? There's a ton of tin. Not, there's a ton of RFQs out there. Okay. But it seems like decisions not really been made. Hasn't so been made yet. Not, some have, some have not. Uh, and a bit of a mystery to us, why it's dragging out. We know our colleagues have not gotten it either. It's not because we haven't gotten the work. <laughs> yeah. It simply hasn't been awarded. Yeah, which is um, odd because it's like we're coming on the end of February, so there's really only you know two months to get ready to get those the technicians yeah. you know, suited up and booted up and ready to go. Yeah, normally you can say that technician who is available in June in Canada, we do not want to have him. That's the reason why I don't have a job in June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's so therefore, true. that's really fighting for for the for the good resources. Yep. Um, we have built our 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 division up a little bit different because the season only is for five months. Yeah. So we have a combination of uh, Canadian crews. Mm -hmm. It's a little base crew. Uh, we have all our management, of course, product yep. management, quality, all the job. We own we own the project, but we have staff coming in from Europe. With you know, of course, adequate work permit and all that jazz. Sure. They're all GBO trained, and we're only working with our rider certified uh, manpower companies. Okay. So we do the quality control, and we're exactly what we're getting. That means we have qualified to this from day one. Mm -hmm. Where our good colleagues that has their own employees, they let them go end of November, and then hire them back in May. And 50% is not coming back. Right. Well, he's starting up with a carpenter. You have to learn. He's not afraid of heights, so he can work in ropes. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> that's, I think that's our advantage that we are building. We try to build our teams to the scope we are getting. Uh, the flip side of that is we need a little bit more prep time. Yep. Yep. Because sure. we want to be sure to have the adequate, you know, uh, <coughs> certificates. We want to have the best of the people. Mm. And we also make sure we get the work permit. It just takes time. And it's challenge those guys, they're really in, in uh, it's all, it's a global thing that they're simply not technicians enough. So if we don't assign them now, they go somewhere else. Right, right. Yeah, they, so these, these, these RFQs that are sitting out there, they need to be let soon. They have to give somebody to a job <laughs> at a certain point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's not only us. I think that's across the, the industry. Yeah. That's, that's my two cents. Well, because AC883 doesn't do work just in Canada, you're doing it all over North America. We do it all over North America, but that also yeah. get the work permit into the U.S. is not necessarily easier than it is to get into Canada. Right, that's true. It's just a process in time, right? Yeah, right. right. And you got to get organized. And I know one of the discussions I heard on the floor this week was essentially power loss because you're not sure where your turbine is pointed. And 
I, 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 my first thought was, well, Lars knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's probably one of the few that can actually find out. Because I, I, yeah. you know, the, the complaint yeah. we're hearing yeah. is, well, we're not generating enough power. Is it the wind resource? We had a, an engineer come up talking about wind resources. Or is it the turbine themselves? And I think it's maybe a combination of both, but we ought to be able to eliminate the the pitch angle of the blades and the yaw yeah. and like yeah. point the thing in the right direction. It seems like the simple you thing, would think. but it's not easy to do actually. Nobody's interesting. Again, I think we spoke about a few times, the new technology, 90% of it is coming from Europe. Yeah. Oh, sure. That's yeah. the nature of the beast because yeah, that's yeah. where, well, just look that's at where the fire started. Yeah. So that, <laughs> that's, that's, that's how it is, right? Uh, and then over here in the ACP and just the Danish booth, on the Hamburg exhibition, is bigger than this complete exhibition. Oh yeah, but yeah, in Hamburg, it's other hundred some odd companies. Hundred and ten Danish, Danish exhibitors last year. Yeah. So Crazy. just to give a perspective, yeah, and there's all new technology coming out. Yeah. It's coming out there. There are a few coming out of North America. One of them is here, but I'm just saying that ninety percent is coming out of Europe. That's just a fact. Yeah. And uh, so the whole control philosophy and the. Uh, accurate alignment of turbines yeah. is also coming out of the German world or the Danish world. Yeah. The DTU, the number of spin-offs of DTU into the wind industry is, is, is crazy, yeah. insane. And that, that uh, ability that AC883 has to go off and look at pitch alignment without touching the turbine, right? Mm -hmm. It's all laser, no, lasers and magic. Yeah, it's, it's laser, it's, uh, <laughs> lasers and magic. La lasers and magic, lasers yeah. And yeah. Magic. <laughs> that's that's what, a new website. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're kind of back to, to uh, the saying I started, uh, I think last year, I said the rotor is the motor. Yeah, rotor is the motor. Yep. And as everybody is talking about gearboxes, all kind of jazz, if a rotor is not aligned, it could be on the pits, it could be on, on the yaw, whatever. If that's not aligned or you have leading edge erosion, yes. well, then of course the turbine is not performing. Yep. And then you start talking about gearbox, it doesn't really matter. The trouble starts at the root because it comes from the rotor yeah. in nine out of 10 times. So that leads into the question about LIDAR. Yeah. Because there's uh, more discussions. You read through the magazines, go online. There's a lot of new LIDAR systems that are out there. But you've actually applied LIDAR to some particular OEM yeah. turbines yeah. that needed help. Yeah. They weren't pointed in the right direction. You want to explain like how that, what, what yeah, that it's, is? It's interesting works? because uh, just to briefly touch on the pitch, uh, I talked to some people, oh, it's new technology. No, the system is actually 15 years old in <laughs> Germany, but it's new here. Yes. Right, right. And on the LiDAR system, the cell-based LiDAR, we introduced it in 2014. Yes. So it's, it's not, not new. new, it's just new here. Yeah. It's been in China for the last 10 years. It's proven. But mm. even China is ahead of the curve that we are here. Sure. Mm. So, but also in all fairness, in 2014, I call it a green banana. But we're not 100% developed. <laughs> now the banana have you know matured to be a yellow banana. So it's, there we it's go. Okay, it's working now. Yeah. I've, and I've been through that painful process. So so. <laughs> and AC and AC83, they don't follow the TRL scale. No. Of zero to nine technology readiness. No. It's how green is the banana. But I had <laughs> hair when I started this job. <laughs> so. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a you know a, 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 a learning curve. It's been good, and now we know it's running. Been rolled up to uh, more than 200 turbines in, in Canada. Oh, wow. And uh, okay, it long. turns out that one of the specifics, I mean, it works on all stall regulated, pit regulated, but it seems like the older stall regulated turbines have a trouble in really being well aligned towards the wind. And that's one issue they have. Uh, the other, it's in their the cell transfer function. That means the true wind speed that the LiDAR is measuring 80 meter in front of the turbine. That's the true wind speed. Mm -hmm. It's not the same on the animal meter. Yeah, animal back in the cell. It's, it's actually yeah. always, always hunt, hunting the wind because it, it registered the wind after it happened. And it's in, in a, what do you call it, in a in not clean airflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. dirty back there. But yeah, so so that's that's one of the issues. And our issue, it turns out, there was also a steep learning curve, that um, the stall regulator wants to hit the rate, of, uh, the rate of wind speed. They can actually get more alarms. So I can't remember what the alarm code is called. But they get more alarms when they hit the rate of wind speed when you're 100% aligned. So we, what we do above rate of wind speed, we actually misalign it one or two degrees. And then we get less alarms on the turbine and we take the loads off the tower. Sure. By misaligning it above wind Just, speed. It's not logic. Yeah. That was only by trying it so many times that misalign it one or two degrees uh, once you get above rate of wind speed. Yeah. But the, the ramping up, you want to align it as precise as we can once over 
we uh, we swim to avoid the overspeed, and then we miss a little bit. And that's with stall regulated turbines. That's stall regulated turbines. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's not the same on a piston regulated. It's also regular. You know, we want to make sure that we have a accurate angle towards the wind. Right. We want to be as close to zero as possible. So in a Lehman's way, you can say we have a better average because it's all based on, based on average. Right. And the same with the animal meter behind. It's also based on average so the wind vane. Yeah. So uh, we just have a more precise average because now we, la- we have two lasers plus or minus 30 degrees coming out. Right. We compare the angles and there we get the correct, uh, the correct uh, uh, turbine angle. Yeah. So if you've proven on the technology on the pitch, uh, the uh, stall, Stall regulator. The stall regulator yeah. turbines. Yeah. That seems like, and we vetted the thing, it's now a, a fully ripe banana. Yeah. <laughs> or does that mean this is going to come into the United States? And a lot? Because there's a lot of, there's a wind farms. You can just drive around Texas. You can uh, point to the turbines that aren't pointed in the right direction. That's true. It's, it's not up, hard. I've been to wind farms where literally you can see driving by it as like 30 degrees different. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't get it. But uh, people right. don't it do seems, anything. They don't yeah. do it. You can see it with your... I just driving by. Yeah, the anemometer you, is. You know that. You know that measure. information's back in like the remote operations center too. Yeah, Someone's yeah. looking at it. Yeah. Like, Whoa. <laughs> so what does that? What does that mean then? Does that mean that the industry as a whole, which is relying on anemometers, which is not a great measurement, and it's in dirty air, and they apply a lot of averaging to it, because they yeah. don't want the turbine hunting and pecking all the time, right. because that just wears and tears on the turbine. Yeah. Because they don't have something very accurate. No. So is, is the move then to go to something like a LiDAR system, even if it's like one every other turbine or one every five turbines, I've heard some operators talk think about it's that. A, is uh, that the move? Yeah, I think it's a matter of the turbine age and also okay. the um, the PPA you have. Sure. Because there's an ROI on it. Uh, on the uh, on the stall we have seen, it's uh, depending on the PPA, Right. it's about 3% power. Whoa. That's a lot. Three percent power for an investment on I'm just saying between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. That's all that's what those that's all it costs. Okay, that's so a lot, that's less than I thought. And it, was it takes be. an hour to install. So it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, and you can either do that. The problem is to get them into the to their Wi Fi system under on the turbine. Sure. They don't want to have that. The data. So we we actually install it and the SIM card in goes straight to them, but we don't even touch we need we don't need to touch the So you're not even touching the power, electrical no. system. You just need power, that's it. That's easy. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean that's always a big thing when it comes to control systems or yeah. sensors or whatever is cybersecurity with wind yeah, turbines. Nobody yeah. wants to. And really... people freak out just on it. If you get access to your internet on the turbine, people start freaking out already. Then. <laughs> yeah. So, some customers now we are potentially going to install in US. Fingers crossed uh, this year uh, on on quite a few turbines. Uh, so it's coming also on the on the stall regular turbines in the US. Wow. But okay. Canada, Canada has more than 200 installed. That's amazing. Okay. But also, think it's, it's, so back to so I've got to a little bit back to the to the PPA and the lifetime of the turbines. Right. Because we have turbines to get you know a hundred dollars or more per megawatt. Yeah. So that's, e- that's easy to justify. Right. Where go down on the spot market in Texas get twenty twenty dollars megawatt, and the turbine is sixteen years old. It's a harder it's a harder seller or harder. Well, I mean, this is you can think make. about this too. That that lidar system can go if there's a if there's a repower situation, or whatever, Ooh. pop it off, put it on the new one. Right. We are on projects now, but what what is it called? Repower IR IRA. Yeah. yeah. We are already and verified there. So one of our clients got us in there, so they are doing a power upgrade. Yeah. And putting a lidar on. Wow. So okay. it's there. It's, so we are in that ballpark. But there's a lot of that so that so much so, so much noise on the so much noise on the communication again. Sure. Because there's all control systems. They can do better. There's uh, three control systems down there, retrofit controllers, and they claim they can do it. Yeah. And I can't say if they can or not. There's a lot of uh, noise on the communication line. Uh, but it, I mean, the the wind vane is the wind vane. Right. So you can't change that. Yeah. Uh, so that wouldn't solve the other thing. They might be have better your algorithms that there's on the controller today uh, but I, I, I can't tell if, if, if uh, I don't think they can gain the same and then you're also back now we're touching people's turbines touching people's controllers and now yeah. it's, a, it's a harder sell all of a sudden now there's more to have yeah. a say yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> sure but with any sort of newish technology I mean it's just because it's not being deployed as widely as it possibly should 
there becomes an opportunity, especially with the repower situation, yeah. where you're putting instead of putting up a 1.5, you're putting up a 2.3 or a, 2.8. God forbid, a three. So what else is what else is cooking, Lars? What else you got going? Well, we have a ton of stuff going with our new partners in the uh, control. That's a drone company. They hate when I say the drone company because it's kind of a trained planes and automobiles because they can on uh, helicopters or airplanes or drones yeah, or whatever. But they can do more than just, you know, taking pictures of blades. It's the most boring thing in the world now. There's more than 20 suppliers. Yeah. So we try to get away from that market. Yeah, was it, I was talking with uh, Yannick on your team, I think, yesterday, and he said that they <laughs> saw uh, uh, f- 14 drone providers respond to an RFQ. There was an RFQ out for the 17 companies. 17 and there was four, four, 14 were bidding on the same work. I didn't, even know, I didn't know there was that many drone companies. I didn't know it's, that many and it's, around, just a, yeah. it's just a beaten down market, so it's yeah. not even interested. Yeah. But those guys can uh, be working now on doing uh, ultrasonic testing on blades. Sure. Yeah. So when we are up on the blade, we see a lightning strike. We want to check what is it? How it, deep yeah. is it going? Mm-hmm. Is it just a scratch? Or is it really doing some damage? We do the ultrasonic, then we can, we can give a more accurate quote to the customer. Because now we know what it is. Instead of having to right, grind into it. But and, right now it could be between twenty five hundred or yeah. sixty thousand dollars we had the last year. The same picture. One was literally twenty five hundred and the next one was sixty six to five thousand dollars for the same picture. Yeah, because once you start opening it up, you have and that's, to, a, that's a that's a problem with all the blade repair campaigns. Oh, it's too. the same. same like same, hey, same. B- hey bid on these and you're like, ah, I don't know, it could be ten to fifty grand. Yeah, I spent a month and a half, he couldn't go to Calgary last year. He was sitting months and a half and we threw four hundred and somewhat. Uh, damages. damages. Yeah. Give me a price on that. Good job, Yannick. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but but it's, so uh, he's the, losing his hair from that. So too. It's, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so it's basically a qualified guessing competition. Yeah. yeah. There's not really yeah. any merit to it. And then when procurement steps in, it's a qualified guessing competition for the lowest price. Yeah. Then again, so we're not bidding on the same terms. What if what if one of our competitors say best case scenario? And, sure. And we you have a, a realistic. And, and we have a European square brain, so we, we do the worst case scenario. Well, fifty thousand dollars, twenty five hundred go with those guys. Everything is done on TNM anyhow. So right. you also get an extra bill. Right. Where we're more re- more realistic yeah. or trying to be more You're getting closer to yeah. what their budget is actually. Yeah, we try to get more to a leveled yeah. true right. and again it is a qualified guessing competition. But now new technology coming in with that ultrasonic scanning with a with with a drone, flying a drone up on the blade and do ultrasonic scanning. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. They do uh, X-ray of transmission lines, all the splices. Oh, the, sure. That's where the failure points are. Yeah. They they have to be uh, X-rayed. So they're flying with an X-ray with a drone. Oh, okay. And they're starting a new project now. We have two drones. Because when you get X-ray in the hospital, that's a back plate. Yeah, yeah. Right. So now they're flying two drones, yeah. one upside down and one here. And doing the lines. And scanning it. Are they going to bring that to the blade room? They have it already. No, not 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 the no. X-ray part. The, if you get X-ray blades, because yeah. I I looked at a project like that about six years ago, and yeah. we were like, ah, but it's difficult because those have to fly in unison. The the base plate cannot move because then it gets blurry. Yeah. But if you can figure that out yeah. for blades, I don't know if they on the blade side, but they're doing a ton of stuff uh, on on the same transmission lines. They're doing a foundations, the program yeah, foundations. Are big area. Uh, even develop a system now to blow my mind. So you're flying with a drone in the tower, inside the tower, to check the foundation there. You open the hatches and you fly directly up and do internal inspection of the blades. You're flying with From the ground? In, from the ground. You're flying inside the tower with a drone. I will have to get those guys on the podcast. It just, it just, <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen that. So, so, <laughs> that, so that's what I'm saying. That. That. Yeah. As you know, the um, AC agency were based on bringing new technology yeah. in, right? So that's right down our DNA. I get totally excited when I see that. Yeah. Uh, because. And we have brought, and we talked about last time, 27 or 30 companies over from Europe to North America in the last 10 years. Yeah. But that's something that, that triggers me. Yeah. They're, they're not American, they're Canadian, so I won't. Right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that's, 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 so that's, what, that's what's going on. Uh, and that's why we need to be more clear in our communication because we have so many offerings. Yeah. As right. an ISP with a different approach and then our optimization, I would call it, mm-hmm. and new technologies. So, and, and I mean, you guys doing spare parts and stuff too. Like if you, oh, yeah. need, if you need if something you need figured parts, out, yeah. you're, call ours. Yeah, he, yeah, He'll find you brake pads and gear oil <laughs> yeah. and pitch All alignment you can't and blade find. repair. I'm, I'm so happy ours. we have people in the office now helping me out. So yeah. We, we increased our staff for 40%. Yeah. 
Yeah. Shout, out to, shout out to Sydney, the new office manager who keeps these guys in line. Absolutely. It was fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> she is amazing. Yeah. This will not be, be possible at all without her. <laughs> She's annoyingly organized. <laughs> <laughs> So Lars, how do people reach AC883? Because you're such a wealth of knowledge and AC883 is, is starting to get really busy. So people yeah. got to reach out. If you want to reach out, I was about to say our website, but that's going to be renewed. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, Lars, L-A-R-S, at AC883.com. There you go. Lars, thanks so much for being on the podcast. And thanks for sharing a booth with us this week at ACP. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you. Hopefully in Hamburg. We will see you in Hamburg September latest. Absolutely. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, thank Appreciate you. It.